coming up on Chasing the Sun. One of the most popular species in there the Florida is. Panhandle is redfish. That sounds like a better fish, sir. That's a beautiful fish. That is. That's a tournament fish right, right there. A couple of these. Two of those, you'd be in good oh, yeah. shape. I'm here with Fred oh. Myers. There he is. One of my close buddies. Look how blue his tail is. He's one of the top IFA tournament anglers. Yeah, this is fish we're looking for right here. We're gonna come out here and just have fun today though. No pressure. So you're telling me when you're tournament fishing that you actually see some fish that are smaller fish that you'll just not even try to catch? Not even catch. Oh man, that'd be hard for me. Yeah. No, the ones I like to catch are all of them. Yeah, we yeah, we yeah. gotta make it sound as good as we can. Go ahead and knock it out. Chasing the Sun is brought to you by Visit Panama City Beach, AFCO, American Fishing Tackle Company, Yozuri, fish the best, Costa Del Mar, see what's out there, High's Toggery, premium clothing for men and women, and by Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. All right, I'm here with Fred Myers, one of my close buddies, and uh, we've been fishing together since we were little kids. Yep. Yeah, um, Justin and I grew up together fishing, and it's been a long time since we fished together on a relaxed day, no tournaments. I'm a tournament fisherman, and Justin's a guide here. And, and every time I get on the boat, I mean, if I'm not winning, we ain't having fun. So. <laughs> He's won nine F IFA tournaments, three IFA championships, yeah a whole bunch of boats yeah. and uh, we're gonna come out here and just have fun today though no pressure we're just gonna catch a few red fish and uh, try to show you what what it takes to tournament fish I mean it's a whole lot of difference in uh, coming out here and fishing on your schedule versus coming out here and fishing when you have a, a clock to fish against a lot of your recreational anglers come out here and can catch some redfish, but I mean, y'all yeah. are trying to catch an exact fish, that yeah. perfect fish, and we'll see if we can't find one of those. Yeah. But another thing I know that y'all run into is you don't get to pick your conditions. A lot of people wait for days where you got, you know, light winds, real good tide, stuff like that, but today's a good example. We yeah. really don't have much tide movement today. Yeah. Uh, got a pretty good breeze kicking up already, so we don't have a perfect set of conditions, but I know that's something that y'all have to adapt to on a regular basis. So we'll see if we can uh, take the conditions we have today and go catch a few redfish. It's funny how we can step up here on the front of the boat and it's like we picked off where we left. I mean, it's been years. Yeah. And, and we just pick up right where we left off. I mean, that's the thing about tournament fishing is, is I mean, I've had several partners and all of them have been very good. And, yeah. But I mean, it takes what I consider a fisherman, not just somebody that fishes. Yeah. If I had to give advice to somebody just to catch fish, is number one, buy very good equipment. As a result, the number one thing in Florida is casting distance when you're fishing artificial. I mean, that bait is only so good for a certain distance out there. And I can honestly tell you that with the exception of a few times, there is a area out here in front of you that is just totally useless because you've ruined it. It's a it. dead zone. It's just dead. There's no fish in there. I was fishing with a, a friend of mine one time and we were fishing together. I kind of insulted him, but that made a good point to him. We were fishing real shallow water and I noticed he couldn't cast far and I said, throw it out there as far as you can and he did. And, and uh, I said, you see where it landed? There's no redfish between us and the boat. <laughs> And uh, he kind of got the idea. But uh, I've been to areas where only you throw 50, 65 yards. And I hate it when you get interrupted by a redfish. <laughs> yeah. We'll take it. This oh, is oh, that's the one. I got a question. In the whole tournament scene, the whole tournament circuit that you fish, is there one team that fishes mono exclusively? I'm sure there's a scenario where you can find where it'll work. But is there anybody that has resisted the Power Pro and, and stuck no. with mono? No. Hey, I'm glad I could ride along and land all your fish yeah. for you. Yeah, 
That's a little nicer fish there. Long and skinny. Long and skinny. Hey, that's all right. You know the good thing? We don't have to weigh in any of these today. That's right. <laughs> it doesn't matter. See, and we can we can take him be uh, he's four pounds right now, and then we do like this. Yeah. And now he's about seven. <laughs> yeah. But that's a beautiful fish. Got a few spots on that side. I know you were saying too when y'all measure these fish. A lot of people don't realize in the state of Florida when, we, when we're measuring a slot size fish between 18 and 27 inches, they have a specific rule yeah. to how we're going to measure them. Yeah, to pinch their tail. That's right, got to pinch their tail, make them as long as, they can, yeah. as we can, and then measure right to the tip. And if he goes over that 27 mark, yeah. we're going to put him back I used to fish in. tournaments before they got the pinch tail rule and enforced it. Uh, you measured with a fan tail with, a, with an 8 inch fan if if the, or a six inch fan uh -huh. if the tail was that big and you could weigh in uh i mean it's a lot easier to catch seven and a half seven and three quarter pound fish but now a pinch tail shortens that fish Ooh, up yeah. half to three quarter of an inch uh -huh. which you're weighing in smaller fish Hook it up right here on that red thing. This one? Yeah. There's jig heads in here? Yeah. See, a real man would not use them pliers. He'd bite it off with a Yeah. Teeth. Yeah, that's what your dentist says, huh? White sand in your toes. Smell the sea in your nose. Touch the earth, yeah, it glows. Sunsets are pretty shows. White sands, turquoise waters, and endless possibilities. Plan your escape today at visitpanamacitybeach.com. Reel down to the water until it's ripping drag. Inside you, there's an outside you. A you that takes the road less traveled than the road less traveled. And finds the comforts of home extremely uncomfortable. This is for that you. Beautiful. Best selection, best service, best advice. For 43 years, Half Hitch has given anglers everything they need for a successful day of blue water fishing or fishing the shallow flats of the Florida Panhandle. With six locations along the Emerald Coast, a Half Hitch is never far away. For your latest fishing reports, check out halfhitch.com. Half Hitch, gear up and get out there. We wanted to go where others couldn't. To fish where the fishing is best. We needed an adventure that we couldn't have any other way. If you're a fisherman, you know what we're talking about. It's all the little things that matter. Fishing with the right size line, you know, um, making sure you're, you're, you know, we're fishing mainly with soft plastics, making sure it's rigged straight on the hook where it looks right. And I think sometimes people make decisions based on convenience too. Yeah, and, and, and you can't do that. I know as a guide or as a tournament angler, people often think you have these magic places that you found and they just produce these fish all the time. You know, they think you put your boat in the water and those fish are there and you just catch them, but 
I often tell people most of the time mm -hmm. I'm looking for a set of conditions not necessarily a specific spot. Mm -hmm. You know, we have areas I know that we fish that, that you, you know fish are there because of your previous experience catching them there. But a lot of times, like you were saying, you know, my style of fishing, I'm looking for clear water, light wind, where, I, where we yeah. can see those fish, you know, and then your style is a like power fisherman. You're looking for somewhere where you don't want the water quite as clear because you're looking for, you know, a little cover where the fish can't see as yeah. easily. As I started traveling, is where I really had to find new area. Mm -hmm. And then when I came back to Panama City Beach and had tournaments in Panama City Beach, um, I kind of got off of those routine spots and, and found other spots. But it wasn't that I got away from those spots, it's just I started fishing those spots on the correct conditions. That's right. And the correct tides, and I really learned the fish of when they're gonna be there and when they're not gonna be there. And, and, um, and, and that's the good about fishing your home waters. Something I just noticed is you kind of angle us in with the trolling motor and get us set up, yeah. and then you just let the wind carry yeah, us. Yeah, the biggest thing is, I mean, like just coming into this pocket right here, we spooked a redfish off, and that thing's moving. I mean, you, the chances of catching him are slim to none. Uh huh. And most of the time when you do that, you can't even get within casting distance of them. But uh, once you get up here, you just kind of let the troll motor guide you uh -huh. and let it drift and um, kind of just kind of fall down on these fish instead of trying to push your way up to them. Yeah. Okie dokie. Justin brought me like a daggum. It's an awesome shirt. Ti whitey tidy shirt. It's slimming. I hate it like that. No, it's slim. It makes you look thin. What are you hey, saying? Hey, it, it makes you look like you did three years ago. What are you saying? I'm overweight? Yeah. Dang, I'm yeah. going to have to bust you with this rod. You need to hit the Oh, man, I didn't mean to pass. do that. Let's go catch some fish. <laughs> So I mentioned to Justin, hey, let's go to the other bank. The whole time we're driving over to the other bank, I'm looking and studying to see where we need to start. Um, there's two things you want to do. You don't want to start right on top of the fish where the fish are. You want to come down to where the fish are without the big motor. Ooh. All right, Fred, let's get moving again. All right, it might be. You'll get walked out of that mess. Oh, that's fish. That's all fish. I got them. There you go. Here, stick the power pole down. That's a nice little water fish there. I actually saw that fish out Did there. Did you really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the one. Look at that blue tail. That's a pretty fish. Look how blue his tail is. Not the money maker, but he is a redfish. He is today. We don't have to weigh him today. Nope. Oh, golly, I got hammered. You did? Yeah. Come on. Uh-huh. I bet you it's a two pound chauffeur. Well, let me just catch him. All right. The wind's almost in our face now. It's terrible. <laughs> Good news is it's working. God, let me still. There he is. Sounds better. It does. He missed it the first time, got me excited. He swiped at it and then let it go, and then he came back and said, No, nah, I think I will bite that. This guy doesn't like the idea of coming and hanging out with us. No, that's a good That's one. a little better fish there. Yeah, I guess today is a mixture of tournament style fishing, but we're, we're putting a little gentleman aspect into it. We're not net scooping them. We're doing a little hand land. Yep. Look at that bait right, right in the corner. A, that is a beautiful, beautiful I'm glad he fish. came back bit again. 
When I'm sight fishing redfish, I mean, a lot of times when they come by the boat, believe it or not, you want to look at them and try to catch. You might have a school of fish that are too big and you might have one of them that are too small. So you're telling me when you're tournament fishing that you actually see some fish that are smaller fish that you'll just not even try to catch? Not even catch them. Oh man, that'd be hard for me. Yeah, not even catch them. <laughs> you know which ones I like to catch? Like the ones that you've caught today, except, <laughs> except for this one. No, the ones I like to catch are all of them. <laughs> yeah, me too. High Stoggery is the oldest family owned clothing store in Bay County. Founded by High Waste Team in 1969 and still providing the best customer service. High Stoggery is now 9,000 square feet of the best brands for all your work, play, social, or sporting requirements. Select from a huge assortment of Columbia, Guy Harvey, AFCO, Costa Del Mar, Yeti, Vineyard Vines, Berry Top Cider, and more. Visit us at our Pier Park location on Panama City Beach to see the latest in men's and women's apparel. Or give us a call, 850-235-1177. This is why we are obsessed. On the Uzuri, baby! It's the Mag Darter, man! The Crystal 3D Shrimp. Here we go! There he is! Big Bull! Big Bull! Love that popper in the side of his mouth. Look at oh, this fish. Crush that Yozuri. You know, I'm a huge believer in this Yozuri pink. I'm telling you, this is the fluorocarbon of all fluorocarbon. Skipping across the surface, that Yozuri. There he is! Nice bite! Oh my gosh! Look at him! Yeah, baby, Yozuri! I don't go fishing without him. This is the new Beastmaster 9000. <laughs> this is hard work. More power, better durability, and heat dissipation. Oh, tripled up! Incredible winding speed. An amazing 250 pounds of max winding power. It's the ultimate toy. And with the new planetary gear system, that equals durability. Incredible winding speed. Yeah, that's a giant. 55 pounds of drag. The Beastmaster 9000 is now a part of my fishing arsenal. Fred, something that we see and talk about and use as a tool um, when we're red fishing is pushing. These fish yeah. push. If you see a push there, see a push there. Um, you, can you, you can tell the difference yeah. sometimes between the mullet push and a red fish yeah. push? A, a mullet push has got several lines behind it and he's going to kind of fade away and just kind of go up and down. You're not going to see them consistently. When you push a redfish with noise or the trolling motor vibration or whatever, that fish will raise up and he'll kind of float and glide and he'll have basically just two wakes because he got such a fat head and then he tapers off real skinny and uh, I mean most of the time when you see that it's too late but yeah. what it does is it tells you that there's fish on the bank and if you're quiet and careful if you notice how slow we're moving I mean I, I mean some people get up here and just jam on the trolling motor and and we've seen a few fish even these fish that we've pushed off down the beach, they'll raise up and I've seen a couple of them push off and you just have two wakes and they'll go up here and sit down and then we kind of know where they are and we'll just go up here and fan cast and catch them. But you can definitely tell uh, the wakes of mullet versus redfish by the you size You can, of I bet not everybody can, yeah. but I think it's an acquired art. Oh, that looks like a better fish too. He don't even know he's hooked yet. Oh, there he goes. Mm, he's borderline. Yeah. I see some little muds through here. I bet you he had some buddies with him. Yeah, he did. Flew out too. Come here, buddy. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful you know, redfish. Another thing about a redfish, I think they give you all their fight while you're yes. while, while they're on the line, because it seems like once you land, they're pretty docile. Yeah, they kind of chill out. They know the routine. Um, you know, we really just catch and release these fish, so uh, I think he knows that. Oh yeah, he knows he can cooperate. We'll take it easy on them, and we'll put them back to catch another day. What a pretty fish. Well, he's gonna go sit down. Uh huh. I'm tired of them too. Oh, he's coming. Something's coming up behind me. Something's coming at us there. See him? Mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. Oh. That sounds like a better fish, sir. That's a better one. That's all right. We'll uh. 
hang tight here and then once we land him, we'll get back on the fish. He's got a nice blue tail also. You know, shrimp, and a, a bait and all that have a bunch of iodine in it. And you know, that's what they feed on. And, and uh, when they eat certain baits or certain live baits like shrimp, uh, they say that the iodine changes their tail color. But I've noticed a lot of times when they're feeding good, they have bright blue tails. If I stick them down here in the water, you can see his tail, how blue it is. And you can see his real blue tail lots in the water. But um, I mean, when we're tournament fishing, we notice that the fish we catch, like these fish, they're dark. We call them lit up. It means that they're feeding. You know, if you catch a fish that is sitting in a sand hole or not really moving, he's gonna change the color of that sand hole. And um, um, a lot of times they'll be real clear and not lit up and uh you know he just hadn't been moving around feeding but these fish are dark and they look like they've been feeding pretty good you know i really do agree with you on that too because i know i've seen that with other fish too um you know i think when that fish gets excited and starts feeding like i know on like a mangrove snapper for example they got a stripe on their head that just glows when they get fired up and start feeding um, same thing I know when we've been marlin fishing, you'll see he'll stick those peck fins out and they yeah. glow bright blue. And he's excited, you know, he's looking for something to eat. And I think it's the same thing like you were saying with the yeah. redfish. They, uh, when, when fish get excited, they have different ways of showing it. White sand in your toes, smell the sea in your nose. Touch the earth, yeah, it glows. Sunsets are pretty shows. turquoise waters, and endless possibilities. Plan your spring escape today at visitpanamacitybeach.com. to you by Visit Panama City Beach, Half Hitch Tackle, Get Out There, Shimano, Focus Your Passion, Jackson Kayaks, Four Anglers, by Anglers, Yeti Coolers, Built for the Wild, and by AFCO, American Fishing Tackle Company. He crushed it right there. There'll be another one right here. I mean, and you just caught that one right here in this little creek mouth. You can fish with the wrong lure and still get bites. You can do a lot of things wrong and still have some success. But you're right, if you blast through here with the trolling motor and you get those fish out of range, out of your casting range, you really have no chance for success. The easiest way for me to describe it is the boat gets you here, but the boat is your enemy. As far as catching fish, the, the, the fish can feel the pressure of this boat moving. I mean, the boat is no different than a deer standing in the woods. I mean, if the deer knows it's there, your chances are not very good. With the water kind of wind blowing and choppy, you don't have to be near as not as stealthy, stealthy on yeah. the trolling motor and stuff because the wind kind of 
blanket shirt, noise and all that. Oh, How are you? I got him. Like you were just saying, and that's also the closest bite we've got to the boat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this is the fish we're looking for right here. He might be too good. And by too good, what does tell me what that means? Over <laughs> 27. An over. An over. Hey, for me, that's a day maker. An over slot fish for you, that's a that's a, a day bummer. breaker. A day breaker. <laughs> Here he comes. Now he ain't too big. Look at that dude right there. Look at that fat fish. Oh man. He might be, he'll be close. We're gonna put him on the board? Yeah. That's what I figured. I gotta know. You let him go, I won't sleep tonight. <laughs> hey, all the talking that we do, <laughs> yeah. we, me and Fred talk fishing a lot, and any fish I tell him about, he, well, how long was he? I go, well, I don't know. <laughs> well, I need to know. Because <laughs> yeah. there's a big difference in a 25 and a 28. Hey, you, you measure him. This is your thing. I don't care how long it is. Fish is perfect. You better check them. Fred, that's the one we came out yeah. here looking for today. We wanted to show everybody what the perfect tournament fish look like, yep. and that's pretty much him. These are the kind of tails in tournament fishing that you're looking for, is a rounded tail instead of pointed. Yeah. And um, that's a beautiful fish. That is. You know, a lot of people, they don't even know this exists no. here in Panama City Beach, but no. it's a great place. You can bring the family, beautiful white beaches, and you come in these marshes up here, we got big redfish big too. Big redfish. For more information on Panama City Beach or to plan your trip, go to visitpanamacitybeach.com or visit us on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for watching Chasing the Sun.